This is a continuation of 3.1 day two, and I want to now tell you a little bit more about logistic functions, specifically the uh, couple of characteristics, including y-intercept and horizontal asymptotes of logistic functions. One thing I want to want you to remember is that our basic function, for the most part, when we write it, it's going to be this, where we have c over one plus a times b to the x. Something I want you to make note of is c. That's something that's going to be an important value for us. That is called the limit to growth. Now generally, that's going to indicate our upper horizontal asymptote. As long as this number is equal to 1. Now we do have an example towards the bottom of the page where that's going to change a little bit, and I'll, I'll let you know what that looks like uh, when we get there. So we're going to find the limit to growth. Now the other horizontal asymptote for just about every case that we could think of, one of the horizontal asymptotes in each one is going to be y equals 0. That's the bottom part. Now the only time that would change is if we, like on the first one, if we had a plus 4 or plus something or minus something at the end, if it, if it did a vertical shift on any one of these otherwise. But for the most part that's not going to happen. So in any of these different uh, functions, we're going to have, if we list out our horizontal asymptotes first, one of them is going to be 0. Make sure you write it as an equation, y equals 0. The other one is basically just going to correspond to this limit to growth. And so in this case, we got y equals 18. That's going to be our two horizontal asymptotes. If we're looking at the second example, our horizontals would be y equals 0 and y equals 16. Now in the third example that you see down here, this one, the horizontal asymptotes are just a little bit different. There's still y equals 0, but notice that this number down here is 3. So we're actually just going to divide those instead. It's going to be 15 over 3 to get that horizontal asymptote, and so this one is going to be y equals Five. All right, so we've got the horizontal asymptotes for all of those examples. Now let's talk about the y-intercept. The nice thing about y-intercept is that it's basically the same for any function we could possibly encounter, and that is we're going to plug 0 in for all x's. That's how we get the y-intercept. So in this case, if we were to plug in 0 for x, that would be 18 over 1 plus 5 times 0.2 to the 0. Now here's the thing about anything raised to the 0 power. It's always equal to 1. So 0.2 to the 0 power is 1 times 5. 5 times 1 is just 5. So what this equals is 18 over 1 plus 5, which is 18 over 6, which is going to be 3. So 3 is going to be the y-intercept in this case. Same kind of thing that happens with these other ones. This next one down here, we put a 0 in for that x. We have 16 over 1 plus 3 times e to the negative 2 times 0. Well, anything times 0 is 0, so that whole thing's 0. e to the 0 is 1, and so then this turns into 16 over 1 plus 3, which is 16 over 4, which is 4, and that's going to be our y-intercept for this one. So it's really the same thing every single time. Uh, what makes the y-intercept here is no different. Uh, we put in the 0 for x. We have 15 over 3 plus 3 times e to the negative 2 times 0. Again, negative 2 times 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1, so now we're talking 15 over 3 plus 3. It's not going to be quite as nice on this one. It'll be 15 over 6, and we can reduce that to 5 halves. And that will be our y-intercept for this last one. So y-intercept and horizontal asymptotes are a couple of important characteristics that we'll see 
uh, on many different logistic functions.